some big news was announced recently for Power Apps developers, and that is that CodeView in Power Apps is now generally available. This is a game changer for both citizen developers and pro developers alike, making it easier than ever to collaborate, share code, and reuse code across your apps. Let's dive into what's new and create our own code repository. When this feature was in public preview, CodeView allowed makers to see the code behind each control, offering better insight into an app's functionality. Plus, it introduced the ability to copy and paste controls as YAML code and PowerFX, the two codes that kind of make up PowerApps controls. This made it easier to modify apps using a code editor. Before its launch as generally available, CodeView was limited only to copying and pasting code for base controls in Power Apps. The big news with the code view now is that we can copy and paste screens as well as component definitions. This makes it easier than ever to save your library of controls and screens and components and make building a new app a seamless process. One change you'll notice now is that we only have one option for copying controls. When the code view was in its preview phase, we had two options for copy, the legacy copy function as well as copy code. With code view now being generally available, the copy button has been simplified to only one button, and the behavior of this button will always copy the code from the control. As you can see, copying a control on screen and pasting it into a text editor will paste the YAML code behind the control, whereas previously it wouldn't have pasted anything into a text editor. If you've never looked at the code view in Power Apps before, you'll see that this code is laid out in a top-down hierarchy. At the top is basic information about the code, like what type of control it is or what's the control's name. As you move further down, you can see more details into the individual properties and settings of the control, like its height or width or X and Y coordinates. While you have this code in your text editor of choice, you can modify any of these values before pasting it back into your Power App. In the case of this button, let's go ahead and add a width property to this. And we'll say the width is equal to 225. You can also see our on select property of this button is triggering a component on the screen called fluent to message bar, and it has a notify function that's sending a message on screen. So in this case, let's modify this message to say, this is a test. And we'll change the notification type to success. Now, if we copy this code again, and we go back to our screen, we can right click on our screen and click paste. It's going to paste our control with the modified YAML code that we edited in our text editor. You can see the width is set to 225. We go to our advanced properties and we go to the on select property. We can see that the on select property says this is a test. If we select our button, we can see our notification saying that this is a test. The possibilities that this opens up for us as Power Apps makers are endless, but let's just look at one example how you might use this to create your very own code repository. I've created a SharePoint list called Code Vault, and in this list we have a couple columns that outline the controls that we want to store in our SharePoint list. We can then easily retrieve those codes in our Power Apps. For the title column, we have a description of what this item is. So in this case, we have a couple Fluent 2 components, as well as a home and about screen, and some formatted header text. We also have a column for code type, and this just specifies what type of code this item is storing. So we have some component code, we also have some screen code, as well as an individual control. We have a preview column, which is an image column with a screenshot of what the preview for that control is. If we open one of these items, you'll also see there is a code column. And this column is storing the YAML code from a control in Power Apps. To add a new control to our code repository, we would go to the app where we have our control or our component 
or our screen built, and we would right click on the item and choose view code or copy. In this case, I'll go ahead and click copy. I'll also take a screenshot at this time of the component so that we can save it as a preview image in our list. Back in our code vault list, we'll go ahead and add a new item. For the title, we'll call this fluent to card in this case. For the code, we'll paste in the YAML code that we copied from our app. For the code type, in this case, this is a component, so we'll select that option. And for the preview image, I'll go ahead and attach that screenshot. And we'll go ahead and save this item. And now you can see our Fluent2 card component is added to our list. Now I'll show you a simple concept of how this can be used in a Power App. On the screen, we have a table pointed to our code vault list. Above our table, we have some buttons to add a new record to our code vault, as well as to copy the component that's currently selected. We have a button to view the preview of the item, as well as a combo box to filter our list of controls. We'll go ahead and play our app. And if I select any one of these, we'll go with our Fluent2 card control and we'll click on the view button to see our preview image. We'll go ahead and filter by the component option, and we can see that now the only displayed items are the components from our list. If I select our card again, I'll go ahead and click on the copy button, and this will copy the YAML code of this item to our clipboard. We'll go over to our components tab, and we'll just right click on a blank component, and we'll choose the paste option. We can see now that the code preview is generally available, we're able to paste full components into a Power App. With this code copied, we'll go to a completely different Power App, say one that we're developing, and we'll go to the Components tab. Here we'll right click on any component and we'll choose the Paste option. This will paste in the YAML code that we copied from our code repository. And we can see in this completely separate app, our component is now available. Let's test out another option. Another new feature as a part of this update to code view is that multiple screens can be pasted at the same time. So let's take a look at how to do that. In our sample app, we'll say that we have two screens that we wanna create as a template in our code repository. We'll go ahead and right click on the first screen and we'll select copy. In our text editor, we'll paste this code. We can see at the top level of our YAML code is the screens header. So this is designating that anything below this code should be a screen. We'll go back to our app and we'll go to our second screen. We'll right click and we'll choose copy and then we'll go back to our text editor. We'll scroll to the bottom and on a new row, we'll paste in the code of our second screen. Now we want to scroll up to the point where our first screen meets our second screen. And you'll see that our second screen starts its code with the screens header. We want to remove the screens header from the second screen. And by doing so, this will paste both of these screens at the same time when we try to paste this entire code block into our app. We'll go ahead and copy all of this code, and we'll go to our list and update our code for our home and about screen. Back in our code vault app, we'll go ahead and select our template for the home and about screen, and we'll select copy. If we go to one of our apps that we're trying to build, we can right click on any screen and we can choose the paste option. Now you'll see that we receive an error, and if we go to the show more option, it's telling us that it could not find the component named Fluent2Nav. So since that component was used in the screen, we need to make sure we paste the component into our app before we try to paste the screen. So we'll go back to our Code Vault app and we'll go to the component option. We'll select our Fluent2Nav and we'll copy that. And then we'll go back to our app and go to components and paste in our nav. You'll see that there are some errors on screen, 
but these will be resolved when we paste in our screen template. We'll go back to our code vault and we'll filter by screen again. And if we copy the code for this screen, it will now paste successfully into our new app. The error in our navigation component goes away because this home screen contains a clear collect function when the screen becomes visible, initiating the collection of the items that are shown in the navigation. So with this code view, we're able to build entire templates of screens and have them available to copy and paste into new apps to speed up our development. We'll go back to our code vault and let's filter by our control option. So here we have a control for formatted header text. And if we select this, we can view what we're looking at and we can see it's just some white text on a blue background. We'll go ahead and copy this and we'll paste it into our app. And we can see that this control brings over all the formatting that was saved with it when the YAML code for the control was saved to the SharePoint list. Using this technique, you can build standard control templates for all of the controls that you frequently use and modify and have them available to copy and paste directly from your code vault. Now let's take a closer look at how this screen is built. We can see our table control is pointed to our code vault list, and it's being filtered by our code type columns value equaling the combo box's selected value. It's also accepting a blank value from our combo box to show all the items in the list if nothing is selected. Our add button allows us to add a new control straight from our app. And this is starting a new form and navigating to a screen that contains the form. We'll look at this a little bit later. The copy button is simply copying the code column from our selected record in our table. If I select a record and look at the preview for this, we can see that the code is listed in the preview window of the formula bar. The view button is simply updating a context variable to show a container on screen. And this container has an image control as well as a dismiss button. Our code type combo box is pointed to the choices of our code type column in our code vault list. Let's go ahead and add a new control straight from our app. We'll click on the add button and we can see we're taken to a new screen. We'll make this screen our template, so we'll right click on our screen and we'll choose the copy option. For the title of this control, we'll call this add control. For the code, we'll go ahead and paste in the YAML code that we just copied from our screen. For the code type, we'll select screen. And for the preview, we'll go ahead and select a screenshot of our screen. Go ahead and submit our form, and we can see we're navigated back to our Code Vault screen, and we can see our Add Control option is now listed. We'll go ahead and copy this, and we'll go to our app that we were building. We'll go ahead and paste our code in this app, and we can see we get a couple errors on the screen, and that's because this app isn't connected to our Code Vault data source, which was referenced by this control in our other app. But in this case, we would simply update our data source and switch out our fields with the new fields from our data source. And that's about it. I hope this video kind of sparks some interest in this code view and allows you to build your own custom code repository. Some organizations might use GitHub as their kind of source control for these components. But for citizen developers or those in organizations that are not utilizing GitHub, you can create your own repository. If you have other ideas for how you can use the code view feature, leave that down in the comments below. Also consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you're interested in future videos like this. I hope you enjoyed the video and have a great day.